She ignored the real-world realities of crime, the fact that stops match up with crime statistics, and the fact that our police officers on patrol make an average about less than one stop a week. What I find the most disturbing and offensive about this decision is the notion that the NYPD engages in racial profiling. Well, we already know how Mayor Bloomberg and the police commissioner, Ray Kelly, feel about the ruling on the city stop and frisk policy. According to a federal judge, changes to stop and frisk will include body cameras on officers, more training, and also supervision. So the big question of this afternoon, will cameras on police officers be an effective solution to all this? Nicole Johnson hit the streets to try and find out for us. Nicole. Well, Tamsin, it really depends on who you ask. Supporters of the cameras believe there's real benefits here, like the footage could be used as evidence in court, and the city would save money on fake lawsuits claiming police brutality. But on the other hand, people are questioning how can officers do their jobs under this type of watch. The movie End of Watch gives you a clear view of what these police officers are doing while on the job. Their every move, and it's similar to what Judge Shira Scheinlin wants the NYPD to do. Scheinlin ruled stop and frisk unconstitutional, but not flat out wrong. She believes it needs to be tweaked, which will include a pilot program that will put cameras like these on NYPD officers, on their person. Anytime that you've got visual verification and an indisputable record, it's always good to eliminate any questions of doubt. Todd Morris, CEO of Brickhouse Security, tells us he has already sold many cameras to NYPD officers for their personal use and protection. The cameras run anywhere from $200 to $800. The difference here is, under the pilot program, the cameras may have to be modified. And there's a question everyone wants to know. When will the cameras get turned on and off? The officer wants to have as much time in advance to turn on the camera. But there are sometimes issues that come up that are very quick that a police officer has to respond to professionally, and they don't have time to fumble with the camera and turn it on. That is exactly one of the reasons former NYPD detective Mike Sheehan believes the cameras will not work. He thinks it could actually hinder police work. Most judges don't want a camera in the court because it just seems that everyone is acting. They go over and above instead of just keeping it real, all right? Would it affect the cop's performance? It may, you know? He, he, may, he may watch his language. He may be very careful uh, with something that would normally flow out of your mouth. Now he's not gonna, you know, he's gonna be extremely careful. He's also gonna be extremely careful about his actions, about his movements. Uh, could cost him his life. And as it stands right now, the one-year pilot program will focus on one precinct in every borough that had the most stop and frisk numbers last year. The 40th precinct in the Bronx, 103rd in Queens, 75th precinct in Brooklyn, 120th on Staten Island, and here at the 23rd precinct in East Harlem, where people have mixed reaction to officers wearing cameras. I believe that it will help, help the stop and frisk situation, being that it will monitor what they're doing. I don't think it's, it's any difference. I think it'll help people, most definitely, because, like, cops these days is real crooked. They do what they want out here, you know what I mean? So it's just like, that's, that's a good, that's, that's beautiful. Keep in mind, Tamsin, the city is appealing the judge's decision, so it will take some time before we see some movement here. We are live in East Harlem. Nicole Johnson, PIX11 News. Tamsin.